Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the concepts that we're going to go over in the weekend and they're going to help us in order to differentiate between anatomical structure. So it's the FAP concept, so the FAP method. We need to realize, understand these methods before we get into the actual meat and potatoes. First thing is reference structures. Anatomical structures are very variable. Everybody has different sizes, shapes, insertions, uh, types of anatomy. Not everyone is the same. People are generally the same, but not everyone has the same structures. Some people have a plantaris muscle, some people have a palmaris longus muscle, other people don't. Other people, other people don't. Some people have an extra scalene, for example. Some people might be missing muscle. Some people might have had surgery and they don't even have the muscle to begin with, which has happened to me on several occasions. <coughs> but what we're going to do in order to combat this problem is we're going to use what we call reference structures. Reference structures are landmarks that are consistent through, among everybody. They're very easily palpable <coughs> landmarks that you can find, and using those landmarks, you can then work your way to getting to the tissue that you that you want to assess or that you want to treat. If you don't use these reference structures, you run the risk of pretending that you're on the tissue but not actually treating the tissue that you want. Now, a lot of people have a netter in their office, and they use netter to guide their treatments because they to remember their anatomy so that they know what they're on or what they're doing. The problem with netter, and you have to understand with netter or with um, even with the, uh, any anatomy CDs that you have or any books that you have, is that it's a very cartoonish representation of the real anatomy. You guys will remember from uh, your anatomy and your cadaver dissections that you know those muscles aren't as big and plump as they are in the books. A lot of them are a lot thinner, or some of them are not really as, as muscular. People are not as muscular as other people. So it, it's not always you know, a cut and dry thing. You can't just take your book knowledge and apply it to a person. So what we need to do is we need to find these reference structures and then we need to work our way backwards into finding the structure we want. If you take out away anything from the course this weekend, please, please learn your reference structures. There's only a few of them for the upper limb. And I might even, I'll go over them before we even start, just so that you keep it in mind to remember these reference structures. <clears throat> the next thing is perpendicular palpation technique. Perpendicular palpation technique is going to help us delineate muscle bellies, okay? All muscles are encapsulated in an epimesium or a, uh, a very thick fascial layer around them. That thick fascial layer really separates muscles into individual bundles, and those bundles have a particular direction um, of, of, of travel, or they go in a particular line. We need to be able to visualize the fiber orientation. We need to be able to visualize the muscle, and then by doing that, we can use a perpendicular palpation or try to roll over the muscle belly's outer layer. So we're going to use that epimesial layer so that we can roll over it. By palpating perpendicularly, we'll be able to distinguish one muscle from another. This is going to be very important when we're doing the extensor group, for example. So in order to delineate um, the entire extensor digitorum or the slips or to know where extensor digiti mini is, for example, we're going to have to be able to perpendicularly palpate. So we have to know where the muscles are going, or for the cortical brachialis. So we're going to have to understand where the insertion and origin of the muscles are so that we can follow them and perpendicularly palpate over them so we can delineate the muscle bellies. Okay? Layered palpation technique is going to be important for muscles that are deeper to other tissues. So if you were here for the lower limb uh, seminar, you would know that in order to palpate, let's say, the superior gemellus, we have to layer or sink through the large overriding uh, gluteus maximus. Okay? So the layer palpation technique is a technique used in order to get us to palpate layers that are deeper. And it's also a technique used for us to differentiate between um, pathological tissue deeper in the, in, in the person's body or more superficial. So in other words,